Hey friends, we're going to make a new app today that is going to allow us to keep count of button presses. Uh, this is a basic app that we can kind of extend out to do all sorts of things like we could keep score in a game, we could use it to keep track of things um, of all sorts, uh, we can keep track of events all kinds of stuff like that. So this is a basic app that's kind of a blueprint for lots and lots of other ideas that you might have. So we're going to start out by making a new project and I'm going to call mine Counting App. And uh, so basically to do this we need um, a button or some other thing uh, to give information that we can use as an event handler, something that is going to give information to the program and that's going to you know, allow it to count. Uh, also we're going to need a label and that's a place for the count to go. So unlike the last app that you guys did, I'm not going to take the time to rename all these things. I'm not going to take the time to change the text to something else like count or whatever. Um, I want you to do that. I want you to think about these things. But we'll get to that at the end. Anyway, that's all we really need right now. Um, so we're going to head over to Blocks. And in our Blocks view, we're going to make it so that every time we press the button, we add one to the count. So that's going to be our pseudocode. And um, in order to do that, we need to be able to keep track of an idea. And the idea here is going to be what the count is. And in order to keep track of that idea, we're going to use a variable. So I'll click on variables, and the first step to using variables is to initialize the variable. So we can use global variables, and we can use local variables. In this instance, we're going to use global variables. That means anywhere in this specific app, this variable that we're about to create is always going to be available. Um, I'm going to call my variable count. It's important to give your variables meaningful names um, because you know while you know what your variable is right now in a week or a month or whenever you look back at this program at some time in the future you may have no idea what this variable was supposed to be. So by giving a meaningful name, possibly a multi-word name even with underscores in between ideally, you'll be able to look back at it and know what it is that you were planning. So now that I gave it a name, I'm going to click on the orange part, and I'm going to press 0 twice on my keyboard, and then press enter, and it will autofill uh, to 0, because that's where I want it to start. For what it's worth, I'm not going to explain it to you now, but if you wanted to count down, you could basically, you could make this be a, a higher number, say 100 or 60 or something like that. And later on when I do math, you could use subtraction instead of addition, and you'll count down instead of up. Anyway. Um, so when we press the button, we want to add to the count. So let's click on button one and then go to when button one, click do. And now we're going to go to where it says count here. And we're going to choose set global count to. <clears throat> and we're going to set global count to math blank plus blank. We want to add the count to what the count was and one. So we're going to choose global count, get global count, I mean. And then I'm going to press here again, type 0 twice, and press enter, and it will autofill 0. And I'm going to change that 0 to be a 1. I could also, of course, go to math, scroll up, and drag a 0 on like that. But um, it's faster for me to not do that, so that's why I didn't choose that. Okay, so that's the count. Now the count is the count plus 1. So the first time through it was 0, now it's 0 plus 1, which is 1. Second time you press a button, it'll be 1 plus 1, which is 2, and so on. And that'll count forever. That's nice. Perfect. Of course, we can change that count number and make it count by 10s or 5s or whatever number we want. Um, but you'll have no way of knowing that it's actually working because we didn't put that count on the screen in any way. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to click on Label 1, and I'm going to scroll down to where I see Set Label 1 text to. Set label one text to. All right. So I have two options here. One option is I could go here to count and choose get count. And now every time I click button one, it's going to add one to the count. And that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But I might want it to be a little fancier. So what if I go over here to text 
and I scroll up and I choose join and I go back to text and I get an empty text box and I put this here now I can type something here like the count is or something else and you might miss this the first time through but you probably should hit space right here that space that's right here now following uh, the colon will add a space after the after it so that the number for count isn't right up against it and it'll look a lot better so that right there will do some basic counting let me show you two other things that will be useful for this app one thing that we'd like to do is have a picture for button one and to get a picture what you're going to need to do is find a picture online or draw a picture uh, you could go to a site like Piscal App I'll show you Piscal App um, so this is Piscal App uh, here let me just show you the whole process so if you just search up on your preferred search engine P-I-S-K-E-L A-P-P -P, and press enter you're going to see Piscal App uh, Piscal Free Online Sprite Editor and you should sign in because by signing in you will be able to save your work and access it in the future um, I'm not going to do that just to save time and because I don't need all my work up here I don't really want you guys seeing it online right now it's pretty awesome I don't want to discourage you so I'm not going to bother signing in I'm just going to hit create sprite um, anyway so here I can draw pretty much anything I want it's a pretty simple to use drawing app uh, one thing that you probably won't think to do and you really should do when you start is increase the size of your drawing because this drawing right here is 32 by 32 which is the size of an icon like up on the top of my screen really small so if you go to the third thing over here I hope it's not clipped off my screen I'm sorry the second thing down on the far right hand side of the screen in case you can't see it it's, it says resize click on resize and make your size wider than 32 pixels maybe a hundred um, that'll be about the size of this box right here on my screen anyway so I'm gonna choose resize and now my drawing is you know, larger so um, you know we can go over here and we can add colors uh, if you want to add a new color hit the plus right here that way you won't lose the colors you have and you can create whatever color you want and your colors colors will add up I'm sorry will pile up here in this little palette um, we can do things like make circles and we can fill things in um, you know, practically whatever we want and we can whoops I don't want to do that awkward um, right so we can you know so here's my awkward weird smiley face since it's so ugly I'm gonna give it two different size eyes <laughs> all right so let's say oops <laughs> oh I can also press control Z if I mess up and I don't want to keep that so control and the letter Z will undo the last thing you did and I should be able to use this as like an array okay so there's my creepy smiley guy assuming you actually signed in uh, you can go ahead and save it if you want to and that'll save it to your online account not to your computer but to your online account so if I hit save I can save it uh, to your gallery or to that's what you want to choose I don't have that option because I didn't bother signing in um, what you want to do to use it in App Inventor is go to export so choose export and uh, you can change its size again if you want I'm gonna keep mine as a hundred you can give it a new name if you want to you can keep it as sprite underscore if you like that just like everything else in computer programming I strongly recommend that you give it meaningful names so maybe creepy smiley face guy or something that would make a lot of sense so there's a couple of file types that we can choose we can choose a GIF GIFs don't actually work in MIT App Inventor so don't bother with that it'll just be one picture it'll be whatever your first slide was um, I'm going to show you in the next video how to animate something like a GIF in App Inventor by the way so if you're interested in that uh, that's going to be the next thing we do so for this since it's one picture we're going to choose PNG um, and we're going to download it so you're going to download your PNG and then we're going to go to MIT App Inventor and for this I'm just going to delete the text 
and I'm going to go to where it says image and choose upload file choose file and on my computer it's going to be on your desktop computer it's going to be in downloads and if you're on your Chromebook actually it'll be on downloads too so that's where you'll find it okay so there it is for some reason mine saved as new pistol even though I left its name as sprite underscore so I don't know but at any rate there's my picture um, so that's my custom button click click right so that's how we do that next class I'm also going to show you how to make your own uh, sounds so that are unique sounds but for this one we're gonna just go ahead and download some sounds so we're gonna go to our search bar and we're gonna choose sound Bible B-I-B-L-E um, it doesn't have anything to do with the actual Bible uh, it's sound Bible the reason why I choose that site is because uh, it doesn't give you any kind of weird pop-ups or ads or download any spyware that I've ever seen or anything like that so when you're on sound Bible there's a search bar right here it's kinda of hard to see on some computers it's really kinda of dim uh, but you can choose anything you want search for it and you can play it alright these are creepy it's pretty perfect all right, so I found the perfect creepy laugh to go with my creepy face. So I'm going to choose toddler laugh, click on it, and this is how we download it. There's two buttons here. One says WAV, and one says MP3. Either one are acceptable. You could use either one. I recommend you use MP3. It's a smaller file, so it'll download and upload faster, and um, it'll it'll work better on your app. So I'm going to click on that. And by clicking on that, it automatically downloads it, and it shows you where it downloads it up there, possibly in a different place on your computer. And now back to App Inventor. And now I'm going to go down to the media drawer, and I'm going to find sound. And I need one of these for every sound I want to have in my app. So I only want one right now, so that's perfect. So I'm going to choose source, and I'm going to upload file, and I'm going to look for the sound that I just downloaded. All right, great. Now, it's very important if this doesn't work that you look at the name and make sure that it ends in either WAV or PNG. Same with the I'm sorry, not PNG. WAV or MP3. And that's true for your picture too. Your picture should end in PNG or JPG or JPEG. All right, so let's code up the sound to work now. So all we have to do to make that sound work is go to sounds and call sound1.play. And I'm going to put that in the code that's going to cause it to play. So there's your whole app. We have an app now with picture, and it's going to play a sound when you click the button, and it's going to keep count. So here's your challenge. Your challenge is to create an app like this to basically take this app that we made together and add to it. I want you to add either, say, another button that's a reset button or um, some other thing that causes it to reset. Maybe it resets at a certain count or something like that. And possibly add a second sound for that. And envision a use for it. So just imagine a use. Maybe um, you make a couple different buttons for keeping count of cafeteria food items. And there's different prices. And it adds the prices together or something like that. Now I know you're probably thinking, gee, how can I do a reset button? Reset button sounds really difficult and scary because there is no special reset code. But if you think about what it means to reset, it's really specific to whatever app that you are creating at that time. So this app just counts. So to reset, it's going to look a whole lot like adding to, except what's it going to make this number be? Zero, right? So the biggest mistake that I see people make is they try to do math to get to zero. Can we redefine this in some way to be zero? Think about that. So give that a shot. Try to make it a reset button that works. Make another sound. And another mistake that I see people make is they delete this. So they use this and then they delete it. And when you delete it, before I do it, check, take a look at these. Notice what it looks like. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And now we have all these red X's. These red X's are showing us that this isn't going to work. 
I deleted the initialization for my variable. And I can't press Control Z and get it. Oh, yes, I can. Well, I can press Control Z and get it back. Okay, corrected. Um, right. So don't delete that. If you do, press Control Z. That suddenly works. And take your time. Make a cool button picture. Maybe a background picture. Maybe a picture for this button. Make a sound or download a sound. And download a picture for this button, too, possibly. You can even do things like, for example, add a new frame. You can even make something like, you know, you could actually just straight up write. This is going to look really ugly because I'm... You know, you can even make your own reset button by, by straight up writing it. Wow, this is really ugly. Oh, well, anyway, you get the idea. Also, it's animating over here. If I wanted to do this, incidentally, the easiest thing to do would just be to trash my first picture and then go to export, export this. Um, probably want to do a better job than I did. Okay, so that's what I want you to do. Um, take the rest of your time to do that. Do a nice job. And uh, see you next video.